Another new feature of Mathematica 9 is units, a very exciting one that users are get really getting a lot out of. And Nick, tell us about units in Mathematica 9. Yeah, sure thing. So in addition to some of the user interface improvements we've made in Mathematica 9, we've tried to focus on a lot of different application areas that we've had in Mathematica. And one of the things we've spent a lot of time working on updating is Mathematica's unit system. And so what we've done in version 9 is we've taken a lot of the lessons we learned with Wolfram Alpha and ha building a very large comprehensive unit system and seeing how people interacted with it in a web environment is we've adapted those lessons into Mathematica for computation purposes. So what I'd like to do today is just give a brief overview of some of the areas of functionality. Um, starting off with unit discovery, how we interact with Wolfram Alpha and how we deal with interpreting different units. Then look at con unit conversions and how we handle things like unit systems and simplifying complex units. And then look at some interesting real world problem solving. Mathematica 9 includes thousands upon thousands of different units, and we're always looking to expand that, that unit base. So we're not, it was easy to start off and look at just adding SI units uh, across ISO standards, which is the baseline that we use within this unit system, but we wanted to expand it and handle all sorts of different application areas. There are lots of specialized units that come up in chemistry or in physics or that come up uh, based on international treaties where you'll have nine different definitions of a foot, and we wanted to include as many of those as possible. And so what we've done is build a unit system based around all the complexity of unit systems in the, all their different application areas and pull those into a unified environment and let Mathematica's built-in uh, tools help you navigate that. So we'll start off with unit discovery. Um, one of the problems with having a whole lot of different units is sometimes it's hard to get started with those. Uh, being able to leverage the techniques we've put together with Wolfram Alpha and the Wolfram Alpha interfaces makes it really easy to get started with this unit system. So, the easiest way to get started working with different units is to just type those in in a natural language environment. The control equals interface, uh, which has been in Mathematica since version 8, allows me to enter in natural language and it will return a Mathematica expression that corresponds to it. So I can say I want 13 feet and it will go off and communicate with the servers and tell me that the interpretation of that is 13 feet and I can look at the input form of that uh, for example, and see what the underlying expression is, which we use a wrapper called quantity that lets us keep track of this is 13 feet, it's not 13 times feet, uh, for example, which is really important with a lot of different units. In addition to what we stereotypically think of as units, we've also included various physical constants. So I can ask for 0.9 times the speed of light, and that will be returned back as a quantity expression that's returned in terms of the speed of light. We don't just say, oh, it's about 300 kilometers per millisecond. We actually treat that as a standalone unit that can be combined with other units as well. The nice thing about this control equals interface is it's really easy to use this natural language directly inside of evaluations and other functions in Mathematica. So if I want to convert the speed of light into feet per second, I can use the control equals interface to do that directly. I can also uh, enter directly in if I want to use a different uh, display form, I can grab either the, the input form of that or the output form and uh, evaluate that easily or get a numerical approximation. Because we have so much curated data in Wolfram Alpha, one of the things that it lets us expand is that we can solve problems related to known data sources without having to do a lot of specific looking up on our own. If I want to figure out how many sheets of standard printer paper will fit on a quarter of an acre, I could go and try and look up that, you know, I know that it's going to be eight and a half inches by 11 inches, which is going to be about 100 square inches. But I can actually send those sorts of queries directly using this Wolfram Alpha interface and get back an exact value based on uh, the inputs that I have here. So I know that there are a little more than 16,000 sheets of paper that could fit inside of a quarter of an acre. Or maybe I want to scale that up to two acres it will modify the input for me, and then I can see how that value scales. You can also work directly with the quantity expression itself and insert natural language, which we will use the Wolfram Alpha technology to, to go ahead and interpret, and then we'll cache those values so that we can use them in the future. And this allows us to work with a lot of heuristics. One of the problems with the units is that they have short names, but those short names can change based on the context. So if I enter 1m, we interpret that as meters. If I enter 1 or m divided by s, we interpret that as meters per second. But if we do mps, 
we're actually generally referring to miles per second, such as MPH's miles per hour. So we've been able to incorporate a lot of the technology that's pre-existing into uh, generating a really complicated unit interpretation system that flows very naturally. We can also use these expressions in things like bar chart, and we can get a really quick visual uh, comparison between different measures of volume. So if I, I know immediately that a British gallon is larger than an American gallon or a US standard gallon, and we can also see a gill is a, a measure of volume that I don't use terribly regularly, but I've heard of it, and I can throw it onto this axis and immediately see what it looks like. Another way that the Wolfram Alpha interface has been expanded to work with units is that we'll communicate directly with our data servers and we can return information directly to Mathematica with units as associated with it. So I can ask for the distance to the moon and I don't get back just a number, I get back a unit associated with that that's meaningful. So I know it's exactly this many miles. I can also pull up general information, such as if I asked Wolfram Alpha about a Cessna 170, that's a, diff that's a small, uh, light personal aircraft, I can look through the various pods that come back and, and see different properties, but maybe I want to do something like I look at these performance characteristics and say, maybe I want to compare these with a Boeing 747. It's probably not going to you know, have, have the same performance capabilities, but I can ask for, I can use these uh, interface utilities on the right hand side and I can ask for the computable data. I'll get back an input form that generates those and then I'll actually get back information like the cruising speed in both miles per hour and knots. I can see what the operation uh, ceiling height is, et cetera. Once we have these units into Mathematica, there's a lot of calculations that we can do that are really interesting. So for example, uh, unit conversion is a very common operation that, that you might want to take place. You might want to say, what is the speed of light in terms of its base SI units? And we'll get back the exact uh, uh, speed of light, which is just under 300 uh, kilometers per millisecond. We can also use these, uh, this control equals interface to parse different inputs, and so I can convert eight square miles into acres very easily and see th the values that are associated with that. I can convert a light year, which is a measure of distance, to a bunch of different uh, units and unit systems, and we can see that can, even though it has a base unit of meters, if we convert it into SI, it knows, okay, kilometers is a more appropriate unit. We have a lot of heuristics that go into dealing with what the normal range of a unit is, et cetera. And this sort of unit conversion can be useful for hands, answering real world problems. Uh, some of the college students in the audience may wonder how many bottles of wine you can fit inside of a gallon. And uh, that's something we can compute very easily because we have that sort of information. It's just a little bit over five, so real-world knowledge at work here. We've also included some sophisticated algorithms that deal with simplifying units. There are lots of different units out there, and we may be familiar with, okay, 100 kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared is going to be 100 newtons, but some of the more complicated components of those we may not recognize immediately. And the unit simplify function allows us to take a quantity expression and it will run through and try and reduce that into a single unit if possible. And if not, we can get a compound unit expression that will be simpler. I've never run across Pascal's per farad in, in the wild, but it's nice to know that uh, we can interpret the different components that make that up into something meaningful. So now let's try and do something interesting with these and see what we can use units for in the real world. Uh, you may notice a common theme with some of these inputs relating to alcohol that does not reflect on me whatsoever. Um, but suppose I want to find out how many jiggers are inside of a, a British pint. We've integrated this with system functions such as solve and nsolve where we can quickly run evaluations with units. We can pull back those base values and we can compute meaningful uh, answers. In addition, we can also add those into visualization examples. So here is a small uh, bullet gauge, which is one of the new gauge functionalities, where I can quickly throw in a reference value of a single jigger, 12 jiggers, which is just under the value, and then the actual British pint, and we can see the relationship th that fits between all of these. Let's look at something that's a little less trivial to compute. Let's say I'm shipping a whole bunch of AA batteries across seas, and I need to get a rough estimate of how many of these I can fit onto a shipping pallet. We can pull down information from Wolfram Alpha, uh, such as the dimensions of these batteries, and we can also pull down information like the size of a, a P6P shipping pallet and throw that into a solve equation and say, okay, we can fit about 1,200 different uh, batteries on there. But we can also complicate that. We can use, for example, a hexagonal packing uh, system for cylinders, and we can throw that into solve as well. 
perhaps a little bit less of a real world example. Um, Randall Monroe on uh, his What If XKCD blog series posed the question or, or answered, attempted to answer the question of how much force power can Yoda generate based on information we have from the various Star Wars movies. And one of the things he did was he uh, handled scaling down a real world object that we have information about, such as an F-22 uh, Hornet uh, fighter. And in fact, one of the things we happen to have in Wolfram Alpha is data about various sorts of aircraft, such as an F-22 Hornet. And I can pull back that information and create a set of rules related to its different uh, dimensions and then use a basic uh, dimensional analysis formula here. I want to take the estimated mass of an X-Wing fighter that was lifted from Dagobah over a certain period of time. And believe it or not, all of this information is documented to some degree or another in various uh, Star Wars fandom sites. So we know that Dagobah has 0.9 times Earth gravity and we can quickly throw that in and we get back a measure in terms of uh, base units associated with that. We can convert that and say that Yo over that time period Yoda was able to generate about 20 kilowatts of power and we also know that's about uh, the same horsepower output as a small sports mo motorcycle. So knowledge at work here. Um, similarly, along the, the same lines, uh, Mr. Monroe also posed the question, or answered, attempted to answer the question of how much energy it would take to take the entire population of the world off the, the surface of the planet of the Earth. Using the same sorts of uh, information, using Wolfram Alpha, using country data, um, we're able to take in information such as the average weight of a human adult, the escape velocity required to propel an object. Uh, from the surface of the Earth, how many people there are in the world, and we can set up, it, we can quickly get a reference for how much power is actually going to be needed to pull those off. We can pull down other information like the total electrical uh, consumption from uh, the world, which unfortunately isn't pulling back here uh, at the moment, but we can quickly generate information and then throw it into visualization functions, for example, seeing that you know, the ratio of power required compared to total capacity on the, the surface of the Earth that's able to generate over a period of time. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with units, and hopefully some of these examples have sparked your interest in, and given you some ideas about exactly what sort of things you can be do using the new unit system for. Well, Nick, uh, one question that I have is, can you define your own units? Uh, so. Right now, there isn't a system for exactly defining your own units, but you can set up your own sorts of unit relationships. So for example, say my foot is 13 inches long, and I want to know how many of my feet are in a mile. So I can set up a relationship. We use a uh, wrapper function for an inert unit or an independent unit, and we can say there are 13 inches for, for every one of my feet. And so there's a little bit under two within two feet, so I can ask for how many of my feet are going to be inside of three miles. And we can see, okay, there's a ratio a little bit below what there, there normally would be in terms of regular feet. So that's something that we're using the principles of dimensional analysis and uh, unit cancellation that lets you leverage and, and essentially define your own unit relationships. No, thank you. And if you want to learn more about units, you can head to the Documentation Center. Many of your questions can be answered there.